In the last video, we developed a way of expressing any wave function in spherical coordinates as a linear superposition of partial waves. In principle, all we need to do is determine these coefficients for a given wave function to find its uh, representation in terms of spherical partial waves. This is of interest to us uh, because we need a way of representing our incident wave function in our scattering problem, which we said went like e to the i kz, both in spherical coordinates, but more importantly, as uh, in this representation, as a linear superposition of spherical partial waves. In this case, we maintain the asymmetrical symmetry that allowed us to get rid of any phi dependence, any dependence on the polar angle. So this expression is still valid. In cases where that symmetry doesn't exist, this should be replaced by the spherical harmonics. So our incident plane wave took on this form, which if we express it in spherical coordinates, that means C is equal to R cosine theta. And we want this represented like this. Here, PL cosine theta to refresh your memory is the Lachon to polynomials. And there's no phi dependence over here. Uh, because there is no phi dependence in uh, in the plane wave. There's only a theta and an R dependence. So the incident plane wave, it must be uh, well-defined at Z tends to zero. So as we get closer to the target, uh, if it's not interacting with the potential, it, it should, our plane wave representation should still be valid in this limit. This means then that uh, the coefficient BL has to be equal to zero because we said that the spherical Bessel function of the second kind diverges as R tends to zero. So we need to get rid of this divergence, and we do that by setting this coefficient equal to zero. So this means that our incident plane waves take on this value. This little tilde is to uh, denote the fact that we're not worried too much about normalization constants. So this is, this is, it means this goes like this expression, but there may be some factors missing. Okay. Our job then is to determine the value of these coefficients, AL. And I won't go through the details, but the idea is uh, you want to use the orthonormality of the Lachand polynomials. And the fact that you can express the spherical Bessel function of the first kind like this. Here, I is equal to uh, the square root of minus one. Okay, so combining these two pieces of information, we can determine what AL is. And this will turn out to be square root of 2L plus one 
i to the l 4 pi so that our incident plane wave which in spherical coordinates is e to the i kr cosine theta where, uh, again, this i is the complex number i, so the square root of minus 1. If we look at the limit, we're, uh, we're very far away from the range of the potential, as we normally have. Then we can express this uh, spherical Bessel function of the first kind in terms of its asymptotic limit. Which we said went like sine kr minus l pi over two. Uh, we can express this in terms of complex exponentials. Then get two i k e to the i k r minus l pi over two over r minus e to the minus k r minus l pi over two over r. Okay, so this is just uh, the complex representation of the asymptotic limit of the spherical Bessel function of the first kind in the limit where we're very far away from the potential. So we're uh, looking very much to the left. So we had our incident wave and we had our uh, target somewhere over here. So we're looking very far away from the target so that the plane wave representation is completely uh, appropriate. In that case, the spherical Bessel function component of a representation takes on this form. So that uh, we can express e to the i k z okay, So we have the same components we had before, but now we have these new complex exponentials. Okay, and the physical interpretation of this is this factor over here is representing outgoing spherical waves. And this factor over here represents incoming spherical waves. So another way of saying this is that a plane wave is a, a superposition of infinitely many outgoing and incoming spherical waves. Each one of these outgoing and incoming spherical waves is one of these partial waves that we've been referring to. So we found a representation of our incident plane wave in terms of these partial waves. In the next video, we're going to uh, construct a representation of the scattered wave uh, in terms of these partial waves. And that will allow us to get uh, a new expression uh, for the scattering amplitude.